Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show today. It's going to be one of those shows again, again, again. What do we have other than Democrats cave in one more time? Folks, the title of the show today is going to be Democrats Caved. Should we have expected anything from the establishment? Should we have expected anything different from what we're actually seeing now? Democrats Caved. Remember that again. These are the people that, that want others to believe that they're strong. These are the people that want others to believe that we should have our trust in these guys who are going to stand up for those who need folks to stand up to. I mean, the Republicans have constantly been bullies. They have bullied uh, progressives. They have bullied uh, Democrats. They have bullied just about everyone. And who pays the price other than the average American citizen? So once again, once again, we're standing here with no help. Once again, we're standing here where we simply have a party that has no spine. Let me ask you one question. When have you ever, ever seen, when have you ever seen a Republican relent? When have you ever seen a Republican party who relented on anything that they believed in? When? When? That is the real question. When? So, you know, uh, there, there are times that people don't necessarily care. And I see uh, the lines are starting to light up. You just remember, 646-716-5812. This is a call-in show. And caller at uh, 960, I'll be getting to you after we go through the blog of the week. Uh, stay with us. 646-716-5812. Uh, so what's the title of the show? Democrats Cave. Should we have expected anything Different from the establishment. Subtitle, Democrats caved in the first battle of the new Senate. We caved in the first battle of the new Senate. Anyhow, it is deja vu all over again. Democrats caved again. I'm not sure what they accomplished by simply agreeing on Mitch McConnell's word. If anyone doubts why the progressive base seeks more than the pathetic leadership from the Democratic establishment, this is a classic example. This is a classic example of why folks have a problem with the party. Not with the activists in the party, not with the progressives in the party, but with the party proper. So folks, let's talk about this. I'm going to uh, talk about that in the blog of the week, and I'm going to show you a few uh, representative videos. Representative videos that I think shows a big problem and why we are the laughing stock. But don't forget, folks, this is a call-in show called 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646-716-5812. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Please do remember, before I get started, share all these videos. This is the only place, or not the only place, but in the independent media is the only place that's going to get a lot of that information and get give you a lot of the data out there that the mainstream media won't touch or that the mainstream media won't allow you to have. So do remember, please share, share, share. You see these videos. It is essential that you share it through your own, your own social media network. It's important that you go ahead and l email links to them so that we can build a base. I want to ask another uh, thing of you. Please go ahead and follow on Twitter, Egberto Willis. That's right, what you see on the screen right now. For those that are listening on the, uh, on the network, Blog Talk Radio, it is Egberto Willis, E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. Please go ahead and follow that particular Twitter handle and like the page. We, that is the way that we get information to you. Like the page. Like the page. Politics done right with Egberto Willis. Like the page. Anyhow, folks, uh, please remember, go ahead and give us a call, 646-716-5812. I want to hear your thoughts. But you know what time it is right now. <laughs> 
It's time for the weekly blog post. Okay, folks, the weekly blog post uh, titled Democrats Did What They Do Well. Democrats Caved Once Again. They caved once again. Democrats, along with a few Republicans, voted against the continuing resolution that shut down the government on Friday. They wanted a DACA deal and thought it was their, their, their only leverage to get it. Probably it was. It was their only leverage because I think right now they have zero, zero leverage. What they should have done is waited for a deal, not only with the senator, but ensure that Paul Ryan and, and a certain percentage of Republicans were on board before they, they actually caved as they did. But ultimately, what did they do? Ultimately, they caved. Ultimately, what did they do, folks? They caved. Sadly, they caved on the promises of a liar. And I do not mean the president of the United States, which has made lying an art form. Who has made lying an art form? I'm speaking about Senator Mitch McConnell, Republican of Kentucky. Mitch McConnell did not promise anything if one listens to the choice of words. And when I say if one listens to the choice of words, I want you to listen to that right now. This is it. Bipartisan negotiations that have been going on for months now to resolve our unfinished business. Military spending, disaster relief, I, I actually health want, care, I, 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 immigration, I want to get that one from the start. I want to get that from the start because I think what we need to show here is, or what, I, what I'm wanting to show here is I'm wanting to show that this man had no intentions of really fulfilling the promise. Here we go from the When the Democrat, when the Democrat filibuster, filibuster, the government, government funding, funding bill, bill ends, ends, when it comes to an, an end, end the serious, serious bipartisan, bipartisan negotiations, negotiations that have, have been, been going on for months now, now to resolve, resolve our, our unfinished, unfinished business, business. Military, military spending, spending disaster, disaster relief, relief health care, immigration, immigration, and border and security, security will continue. continue. It would be, it would my, be intention my intention to resolve these resolve issues as quickly as possible so that we can move on, on to other, to other business, business that's important to our country. Our country. My intention. However, should these issues not be resolved by the time the funding bill before us expires on February 8, 2018, assuming that the government remains open, it would be my intention to proceed to legislation that would address DACA, border security, and related issues. It is also my intention to take up legislation regarding increased defense spending, disaster relief, and other important matters. The shutdown should stop today. Now listen to what he had to say. It would be my intention to do something. In other words, Democrats got snowed once again. Your intention to do something doesn't mean that you're going to do it. And that is what we, that is what, not we, that is what Democrats went ahead and agreed to. That the majority leader, Senator Mitch McConnell, decided to say, it is my intention that I will, sub, that we'll try to get DACA done. It is my intention that if after February 8th, we're not a meaning when the CR expires, we're not able to go forward, that we will go ahead and bring it up to a vote. And of course, it doesn't tell you what the reactions to the vote is going to be. It doesn't tell you anything of this nature. If you have any doubt that he has no credibility, just listen to the, the framing that uh, uh, Jeff Flake, another Republican who voted against the bill, that decided to vote on it now. This is what Jeff Majority Flake Majority leader, leader, using his, using his discretion, discretion. Uh, and his authority uh, as majority leader will move, will move to immigration. immigration. And that, at that time, we can deal with the DACA issue and broader immigration issues generally. That uh, moving to immigration, my understanding is, and I believe the commitment is, not to prejudice one bill over another, uh, but anyone can bring forward uh, their bill. There are several of us who have been working, for, uh, working on a bipartisan bill. I believe we have seven Republicans and seven Democrats on that effort right now. Uh, that, legislation, that legislation uh, certainly, uh, will, certainly be will be considered, as will other legislation, legislation. Uh, as it as should, it should be. be. I think the Senate, the Senate should act, act like, like the Senate. The Senate. And I, I just, just want to say, say that, that uh, there's, there's been a lot of rhetoric over the last couple of uh, 
days about who shut down this is, who should have the blame. There's enough blame to go around. And I hope that we can uh, move away from that and just find a way to open the government back up and move about our business and let the Senate legislate as it should. Now listen to what he had to say. Uh, he believes, he thinks, he assumes there's, no, there's, there's nothing there. There's nothing that occurred on Friday when the shutdown occurred that changed today on Monday. The only thing that changed is the loss of reputation of the further losing of the party's reputation in that you're not fighters. You won't stand up because you know what? They could have stood up. They could have stand, uh, stood up here. I mean, uh, three days, three days, three days. Did they really think that opinions would change? And you know what? Who cares if opinions change right now? The fact of the matter is that the, the people that work that are going to be active and the people that really want to go out there and vote. This is a deflation for them. Those of us who are activists, progressive activists, do you understand the flack that progressive activists are going to take now because of this cave-in one more time of the establishment? Do you know how difficult it is to keep people in to keep people inspired and to keep people thinking that there's some party out there that is going to fight the good fight for them and not worried about losing, uh, 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 losing people on the margins because the people you lose on the margins you can recover because you exerted strength. I want to speak a little bit about later on when I get into the discussion with the fo folks that are waiting to get on the phone, what Schumer and those guys should have done before Friday, at Friday, and after Friday that they didn't do that the Republicans were very good at. And this is something that I've written about at the Daily Coast. It's something that I've written about at the liberalnetwork.com, op-ed news, egbertowillies.com, and everywhere else that we try to tell folks, you have to be in the game. This, you know, people want to, it was allowed to be framed as this was DACA. In other words, the Democrats were just holding up legislation just because of DACA. Let me tell you something. It's, it's a lot more, and I, what I want you to do is listen to just what uh, Representative Clyburn from, uh, I think it's South Carolina, had to say. Domestic spending for all of the children of these military people as we see for everything else. Chris, as you know, I am from a military state. Fort Jackson, I live within the shadows of Fort Jackson. I was born and raised in Sumter, South Carolina, Shaw Air Force Base, uh, Ninth Headquarters of the Air Force, uh, and also the headquarters of the Third Army. I believe in taking care of our military. I represent them, I live among them. But they, when they go off to fight the wars, they leave their children, their spouses, and they want right. their children to have health care, education, and their spouses to have the same. That's what this battle is about, and American people need to tone in to what the debate really is. Illegal immigration is a camouflage. It's got absolutely very little to do with what we want to see done uh, here on the floor of the House of Representatives. So I'm waiting to see whether... Now, uh, I, I didn't let him finish, but what he, what he pretty much said is he wants to see what's going to happen when that new bill gets to the House. What is Ryan going to do? With, is he going to pass it or what? But it's a lot deeper than that because within, within what has to get done are, uh, are issues with domestic spending, which he, 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 in effect he's saying a lot of this has to do with cornering the Democrats to force them into making decisions on the military, et cetera, at the same time that they starve domestic spending. And if you doubt that immediately, immediately after this, this, this was reached, this compromise was reached, uh, Republicans had no problems whatsoever, no problems whatsoever letting Democrats know the deal. Certainly we don't have a strategy going into this, and I think that they discovered after a couple of three days that they were playing a bad hand, they were playing, playing a weak hand, and that this isn't going to turn out well for them. And I think I'm glad they decided to vote with us to open up the government. And let's get the discussion going again on how to solve these important issues, one of which, of course, is, is DACA. Now, let me tell you, first of all, I don't agree with him that, uh, that, oh, that they had a bad hand. 
what I agreed with it is that they didn't understand or know how to play their hand because they had a good hand. They just played it wrong, and they played it wrong by sitting at the sidelines. Just like the, right now, uh, for, the, for this blue wave that I've spoken about for a long time now, just like how they, they, they played their, they're playing their hands with the blue wave, they're playing their hands here, doing absolutely nothing to drive the narrative, doing nothing to drive the narrative. You see what uh, Rep Representative Clyburn had to say? He focused on, well, this is not only about DACA. This also has to do about domestic issues. This has to do about not only having military spending. What he did is he gave a narrative. Where was that narrative before? I don't know. But we had no narrative over the weekend, and Trump was in your skin, and all the Republicans were in your skin. It was the Schumer. Nobody knows who Schumer is, but it was a Schumer shutdown, and the president kept quiet. And everybody, are, they're, they're talking about, oh, the president is quiet. He's not engaging. You know, Morning Joe today was uh, really giving it to the president. But you know what? The president won. So, I mean, no matter what you have to say about Oh, he's weak. He's listening to uh, Miller uh, and so forth. As far as you're concerned today, the president won. And here's the thing about it. People, you know, I heard a commentator saying, you know, you guys keep saying, oh, this is a short term win or did, did the president win by just kind of walk into a win. It doesn't matter if he walked into a win. He walked into a min win when he won the when he won the presidency of the United States as well without even winning the popular vote. The guy, you know, when, when it talks about, oh, the guy knows how to win. Hey, if you just take a look at results, man, if you just take a look at results, whatever it is that he's doing, and I think mostly it has a lot to do with the incompetence of his opposition. Yeah, I'm sorry. He's winning. So, folks, throughout yesterday after McConnell made his false promise, left-leaning pundits started talking about Democrats overplaying their hands. Are you kidding me? The Republican Congress since the third year of the Obama administration has been intransigent and obstructionist. While they were called out, how many times did anyone say they were overplaying their hands? Americans want someone they know will stand up for them. It's, it's clear that knowing what Democrat, knowing that Democrats caved again will do little to bolster their faith. It will do little to bolster their faith that they have a party that will fight for them. Republicans, Republicans stole a Supreme Court justice from President Obama. The Democrats had options to play hardball, then including that, then including a sort of recess appointment. They could have done some something to get uh, to, to just exert their will for a change. Exert their will for a change even if it's a short term we'll just show that you have a spine show that you're willing to fight forget about what you think oh if we do this then the republicans are going to say do you think they care do you think they really care did they of course not did they try to at least get that supreme court justice that really was obama's to a point in no they did and obama himself as well did absolutely nothing to force the hand nothing nothing Republicans had no problem immediately blowing the filibuster and putting an ideologue on the Supreme Court, Gershich. No problem at all. None whatsoever. So yes, Democrats caved again. It is up to the grassroots to elect progressives that are not scared to fight for the things most Americans believe in. You see, Republicans don't ask if America wants this. The tax cut was hated by more than 60% of Americans. They didn't care. They went ahead and did it. And guess what's starting to happen? Oh, the American population is starting to warm to some of it. There was a generic poll that had Democrats double digits ahead of Republicans. Right now, the double digits is now five points. Okay? There is something about exerting strength whether good or bad, that people want. And unless you are willing to exert strength, you get nothing. Nothing. Okay, line, uh, let's see. Let's go to the lines. I think I'm going to bring in line uh, 960. Or I think it's 980. Come on in. What's your name, sir? Or a person? Yeah. Hi, Virgil. How are you Virgil doing? Who, who am I speaking to? Joshi. JC, how you doing? Invisible Houston. Yes, how you doing, my friend? 
I'm doing well. I, I couldn't agree more with you. Um, there's a old saying from the West Wing, uh, you know, they'll like us when we win. Exactly. And Democrats, Democrats have done absolutely everything to make sure that never happens. I mean, it, it, it is as if they are scared uh, to show strength. It is as if they are scared to just take a chance at something. And Republicans don't care. They just go and move forward. And you know what? They win. They win. And, you know, uh, yesterday, uh, uh, JC, I went ahead and I, I wrote a blog. And there is a, a progressive young woman. And that she, she left a, notice, a, a note on the blog post that we made. And she said, I am tired of you. I'm sick and tired. Something to that effect. Of, of my pessimism. And this is, a resu- this, is, this is why we're pessimists. Because what I ex- try to explain is that, one, for the blue wave, we're d- except for the activists that are out there, and you are one of those activists out there that are trying to round up people and trying to keep them encouraged and trying to get them to the polls and trying to tell them, no, this time around, we're going to fight and we're going to get things done. We're going to get what Americans really want. We are really going to give Americans what they really, really want. We are going to give them the progressive agenda, even if they don't want to call it progressive for those who aren't progressive. Even, if, even though they don't, they don't call themselves progressive, there are so many out there that want this agenda. Yes, we are going to get people out there and tell them, yeah, for, for once somebody is going to be out there ready to fight for you. And what do we get? What do we have to show? The first, the first time that Democrats had to stand up in 2018, a cave. Go ahead, J.C., I mean, this is, it's, it's a massive failure by the leadership in not understanding how negotiations and leverage work. CHIP, not passing CHIP would have destroyed the Republican Party in the midterms. Exactly. It would, it would have been irreparably damaged considering how many of your, their constituents benefit from it. And then DACA also has massive, massive support. Yes. Democrats had more leverage now than they did with President Obama in office. Exactly. And there's, there's something that they don't understand with DACA, right? DACA may be 800,000. Well, some say 600-something thousand people who registered or 800,000. I think it's probably more than the 800,000 altogether. But what they don't understand is DACA has a whole bunch of split families, meaning one person in the family may be DACA, uh, under, under DACA, but the other person may be a U.S. citizen. A whole lot of DACA folks now have U.S. citizens that are their kids. So therefore, we're talking about a split family. We're talking about the breakup of the family. You can't tell me that Democrats didn't have the opportunity to go out there and make the case, not only about DACA, but about CHIPS. The, chi- the CHIPS case that, was, that they, they needed to make is we, we, we fought the Republicans to pass CHIPS three different times. Oh, before, before this, this CR, we, we fought them. They should have been out there in front of every screen. They should have. You know what? The, you had uh, Donald Trump come out with a commercial. The Donald Trump election committee or whoever they are come out with a commercial or an ad that goes ahead and says, oh, those, those, um, those people that, are, that, that the Democrats are fighting for, if they kill somebody, it's on you. Where was the response to that? In fact, they, we shouldn't have had to have a response for that before that ad will ever dropped. The first ad that should have been ready before, before Friday. There should have been ads out there talking about Republicans, the, 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 the uh, people that love to speak about family values, are about to destroy families. They're about to split families. Where is, where is the activity from from Democrats who know how to market or who knows how to create the correct narrative. You should have been out there talking about this, the destruction of the family by the Republican Party. Where were you? What are you doing? Come on. Go ahead, JC, and then I'll go to uh, 210 thereafter. But before you come in, I want to just say, Jessica uh, Gorchala, speaking of which, let, let me get, get some people here on the, on the, on the site here. Um, Let's see. Uh, speaking of which, check out my friend John uh, John Hemans running for Congress in Montana. Great, uh, Jessica. Sometime get him on the show. We'll we'll be more than happy. I'm I am actually bringing uh, progressive candidates on the show, whether they're in, in the Texas area or around the country, because given that many of the progressives are not getting the recognition that they do, our intent here is to make sure that through our other networks, meaning Blog Talk Radio, meaning. Uh, politics done right and these other networks we are going to feature 
we are going to start featuring progressives all over the country. So for those that are listening right now, anybody who wants to have good progressives that are running on air, just uh, send, send us a notice at info at politics done right dot com. That is info at politics done right dot com. OK, Jessica also say we need to elect strong progressives. Uh, there it goes. OK, Chris says Dems biggest problem is that they think that they can talk about things, these big ideas and put people and, and, and that people will get it. It's a marketing contest. The party sucks at it. Uh, Chris, you're absolutely right. William McCloyd said, exactly. Kelly uh, Ruder says, you should... Oh, no, I can't. I'm not a politician at all. I am an activist. Never run for... I'll never run for anything. And I've said that now, so now you know I can't run for anything. Because, again, my goal is to make things better for us all by, having, by helping others win the election. Uh, let's see. Um, I have to refresh. Anyway... Uh, JC, let me put you you on hold right now. I'm going to go to uh, 210, and then we'll get back with you in the, in the program. All right, let's go to 210. 210, is this uh, John, I believe? Yes, it is. How you doing, Edgar? How you doing, Good afternoon. John? Talk to me, my friend. Okay. Uh, I just want to give kind of my progressive bona fides before, uh, before I say my piece. Okay, here. go ahead. Give your progressive uh, bona fides. Guys, I know where your piece is going. Like it at all. I know that. I know they won't. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, you know, I'm a big Bernie supporter was yes. in our revolution meeting yesterday. Uh, I've been a progressive, been calling into your show for what, at least five years. Oh, absolutely. So, yes, but, sir. You know, I've always, but I've always thought this, this was, not a smart move. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, first of all, you, you say that we have leverage. We have no leverage at mm -hmm. all. We don't have the votes to do this. And the Republicans are not going to cave. They, they simply aren't. So from the first, the first time that we did this, this was ill-conceived and was, it just wasn't thought out mm -hmm. at all. The fact is, is that, you know, they, Despite the fact that the the health care uh, that, that eventually didn't pass, and I'm very happy it didn't pass, mm -hmm. the numbers were terrible against that. The, right. the tax scam was terrible against that. They didn't care. Right. They simply don't care. And so why are they going to care about DACA people when Trump ran on this? So, I mean, it's not about that, though. Like, Let, like all of a sudden we're going to shut the government down and the Republicans are going to cave was ridiculous. Let it's me stop you for insane. a second there, my dear. So, friend. I mean, let me let me ask you to stop for a quick second, because I know where you're coming from. And that is a thought process that we've had for years. And in fact, you've heard me say that exact same thing. No, it's at, not. Can I can I make a statement? Can sure. I, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say something. I'd like to respond. That, 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 no, no. That, go ahead and respond. Correct. It's OK. It's OK, John. Go ahead. Okay, because, I mean, this is about power. Mm -hmm. We haven't had power. Uh, the, the only time that we've had power in the recent past was in, during the, the year 2009 and 2010. And unfortunately, uh, even during that period, we didn't have 60 votes. And we could have changed the rules to 50 votes, and I, I think that we should change the rules the next time we, we have the Senate uh, and the House. And, and so to, to make it easier to, to pass, though. Uh, to pass anything because nothing is going to pass with these six, this sixty vote threshold. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, it, it, we we do, we are not in the same position. We've never been in this position. Uh, I mean, the position that we're in is the same position that we were in two thousand and five and two thousand and six. Republicans control everything, and they don't care. And to think that they would cave is just delusional. Okay, now let and me so, respond. I mean, yes, we should be fighting for the dreamers. We should be fighting for all the issues. But I don't even believe in government shutdowns at all. I think they should be illegal. You know, with the Congress in many countries in uh, Europe. It's, governments don't shut down. If they can't come to an agreement, they just have a continuing resolution that rolls over. And I think that the same thing should happen in America. Okay. So. Let me respond to that now, John. First, I, I understand exactly where you're coming from, and there are times that I had that thought process as well. Here is where my thought process has changed. My thought process has changed in that if you are not – is that uh, – the Republicans have no problem in hostage taking, none whatsoever. And as far as caving, you're absolutely right. They would not have caved. But let me tell you when they would have caved, okay? 
In other words, we, at some point, you have to break the cycle. And the cycle isn't broken by, uh, you know, uh, people say, oh, let's just wait for elections. Oh, no, the cycle isn't broken by elections either because, again, what happens is they have a, 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 gerrymandered, a, a, a gerrymandered institution that's going to be hard to break even now. You know, we, we spoke about the blue wave, uh, the, the, the dwindling of the blue wave. But here's my thing. You, you, you hold the government until it starts to have a material effect on their people. Their people are the business people of the world. And when, when, I mean, when, they, won't be, they won't stop anything because of chips. They won't stop anything because of DACA. None of that is what I'm talking about. But they'll stop something when it starts to have a material effect on the wealth of their people. And when that happens, they're to, what will they do? They will try to create some format in which they drop from 60 votes to the 50 votes, which is what they would need to get done. And then I would say, hooray, because at that point, they really own everything. And we as progressives, when, the, when all of this has broken down, in other words, you have to go into the fight saying, I will fight to the end and them know that you're not going to cave because the problem that they have with Democrats right now and, and John Thune just showed it in, in a piece that I played there is they know that Democrats have no spine. The Democrat, not Democrats, the Democratic leadership has no spine. My thing is at this point in times, these guys are terrorists. At this point in time, you hold them to the limit. John, I'm going to keep you on, but I need to get to a couple other calls, and then we're going to continue with you because I know you want to respond to that. Let's go to 406. 406, come on in. You're on. Oh, let me get that on. I don't think you're on 406. All right, 406, I think you're on now. Come on, 406, you're on. Hey, Egberto, this is Jessica Cargella up in Montana. How Jessica, are how are you doing? Great to hear from you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I love your show. Um, thank you for raising this topic. This is a topic that um, I, I've been very angry about since the since the end of our legislative session. Let me let me ask as, you to stop one second, Jessica, because just, Jessica, I need to let folks sure. know who you are. Jessica is w one of our leading progressives in Montana, and she is in the legislature. And I tell you what, we watch her, and she accomplishes. She fights for what she believes in. Continue, Jessica, please. Thank you, Egberto. Yeah, sometimes it's a lonely process because yes. of this very problem where we don't message well, and it's because it's our leadership that get to do messaging. That's who the, the media talks to. That's who the leadership from the Republican Party talks to. So our last session, we were um, struggling with revenue, and we were struggling to fund things like critical services for children, people with disabilities, the elderly, and the Republicans held the funding hostage by bargaining for a private, private prison contract. They had decided 10 years ago that they would, um, the state would buy out the contract. It was due to end in a few years. And the Republicans came back and said, okay, we'll agree to fund some of the need if you agree to let the private prison industry have this contract back. The wow. tactics are the same. The problem is, um, and then they refuse to, to pass any good revenue bills. So we're trying to find good ways to tax, uh, to increase taxes in ways that don't hurt working families. So, you know, hospitality taxes, rental car taxes, where people have disposable income, they refuse to tax any type of revenue. A tax on... Um, tobacco products or alcohol products, even sin taxes are unpopular. So we were very frustrated, but then when, when, when push came down to shove and they got even uglier, they also brought a bill that would dictate how the funding would be restored should revenues increased again, which um, stated, they put it in statute, that right. the funding for these critical services would be the funding restored last after all of these other non-essential, non-critical, like maintenance, highway maintenance or something. Infuriating. And our leadership told our caucus, vote your conscience. They didn't message on it. What they had done was barter to get something else in exchange. But they barter in good faith. They think that the Republicans will actually negotiate with them, and you're absolutely right. They are just terrorists. They have no goodwill. They want a government small enough you can drown it in a bathtub. And the Democrats keep believing that there's some goodwill on that side, that they're, they're being honest with them, and they're not. Jessica, I just, uh, I'll be frank, I just don't get it. 
I mean, uh, it's like how many more times must you be kicked before you start to believe that these people have no dignity, these people have no morals, and these people have no humanity? That is the reality. They, I mean, uh, the things that they do, the things that they hold hostage, what, I mean, it, it is what more do you want? Or what, uh, you know, what will it take for you to realize that you can't negotiate with these guys? You must go ahead. And, and at this time, and, and that's why, you know, I mean, uh, I understand what John is saying, right? But the reality is at some point, mm -hmm. at some point, you have to just say, you know what? We're going for the gusto. At some point, you have to say, you know what? We, we, are, we are not going to give in this time. And when they realize that it is not gonna, it's, it's a time that we're not going to give in, then you'll see a response. Then you'll see, I mean, and it wouldn't be a response because they're nice. Right, right. It, it's just, just, no, no. And it's just like you say, if the Democrats would all lock down in opposition, just vote in unison and vote in resistance, just no on everything, then when things start to fall apart, you can look at the voting records and just say, you know, not only are they the majority, not only do they control both chambers in the White House, but um, we voted against them every single time in unison. Yes. It's all on them. And, you know, and but that's the, the Democrats are, are now they won't they won't work in unison because there are those Democrats who are moderates they're centrists. They're, neoliberals. They're neoliberals, whatever you want to call yes. them. Right. And, and they are not um, coming from districts or so they say, where um, their voters want that. Okay, my argument is, are they really in touch with what their voters want? Because I am seated a Republican. I remember. In a long-held Republican district. And when I campaigned, I campaigned on very progressive liberal platforms. I talked to pro-life people about being pro-choice, um, you know, these very hot topics. So you have to go out and talk to your voters and meet with them and be, build up that credibility. You know, somebody running a congressional race can't go to every door, but they right. can have town hall meetings and they can listen to people and they can respond and they can message in that way. And, yeah, we we need to get more good progressives out there doing the grassroots work, get them elected, and maybe we'll be able to do that. But another call to action for good people like you doing good work. No, I, I watch your campaign. Hold their... Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, um, ask your folks to, to hold their um, representatives, their elected leaders responsible. If they're centrist Democrats, if they're neoliberals, please ask them to contact them and hold them accountable. Look at their voting records and keep, uh, p keep track and then pay attention to what they're going to be voting on and make sure they're being represented. Well, you know, I'm Jessica... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, not at all. Jessica, you know that I believe in, in bottom-up. So what I tell a lot of our folks right now is what we have to do is don't expect these politicians to just change on a whim. We have to make them change. Right. So we are the ones that have to go out there yeah. and force the change because it is clear that they really... You know, first of all, they are pretty darn scared. That is how they act. Very, very scared. So oh, yeah, they are. Jessica, let me get to another call here, and uh, I'll, I'll keep you hot if you yep. want to stay on to make another comment. But 631, you are on the air now. 631, you're on the air. Talk to me. Hi, Egberto. It's good to talk to you. Yeah, who am I speaking to? Uh, this is Walker Bragman. I'm a, I'm a journalist with uh, Pace Magazine and a number of other places. Yes, sir. Talk to me. I'm a journalist. So uh, I... I I gotta say, I love, I love the, uh, I love the show. I've been, I've been watching this segment in particular, and I, I think that you're, you're spot on. That Democrats lost this one, uh, and I have to say that I, I personally, I think that it can be traced back to, to Reagan. Mm -hmm. uh, the Reagan Revolution really showed Democrats uh, that the country could turn on them, and I don't think that they've really recovered, especially the leadership of the party. Right. Younger Democrats, not so much, but the leadership definitely uh, seems to think that they, if they push too hard, you know, there's always that next next wave election against them. Um, so when you say that you, you know, you have to replace these people, or you have to stand up to the leadership, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I can't see any other way because the, it, it's almost, first of all, they're old. And I, you know, I'm saying they're old, but 
I, I have to say that because, you know, there's a certain amount of gravity that prevents them from moving out of their, their cycle. And at the same time, they don't give the younger folks in the party the power that they need to excel. I mean, if you take a look at our bench right now, um, I don't really see a real progressive developed bench in the Democratic Party for any real, I mean, uh, if you if you look at the governorships that need to be filled and, and the senatorships that need to be filled and so forth, it is so bad. I mean, uh, you, you take a look at what really occurred and what seemed to have occurred is a depletion. You know, uh, these people who are in power wants to stay in power for so long that they've not developed a good bench. And worse than not developing a good bench is they themselves aren't the progressives that the party platform dictates. I mean, we fought as a Bernie Sanders uh, delegate in, in Philly, and we fought like hell for a particular platform, a great platform. You take a read of the Democratic platform, a real progressive platform. You sit down there and say, what the hell happened? You know, okay, you're not in power. Well, you know, start preaching the things that people want, and you will get into power. But, you know, we allow these folks to, di we allow these folks to dictate the narrative. And what we have to do is take it back as, an, as a good example, and I don't, I, I, I'll, I'll bring you back in in a minute, but as a good example, the shutdown was going to happen, we know, because they, we know that the, the, the Republicans weren't going to budge at all. But you know what? You don't wait for the shutdown. That ad that president uh, that, that came out for Trump, that spoke about Democrats, um, any, any murders that occur, any killings that occur from, a, uh, from an immigrant, when uh, during this shutdown, it will be the Democrats. I mean, those things were already market tested and all of that beforehand. You know, they were ready. They were ready with a narrative. They were ready for a production. There were no Democrats out there putting out a well-designed and, and market tested the destruction of the family. And then you bring in the evangelicals into that. Evangelicals who support uh, the family. I mean, there is, so, there is so much marketing to be done to embarrass a whole lot of folks into not necessarily supporting it because we also know that the evangelical Christians right now have no soul. The fact that they can, that they can have uh, as their leader, President Trump, we know that they have lost whatever moral compass they've ever had. I never thought they did. But whatever moral camp compass the leadership of the evangelicals have is gone. It's completely gone. But we could have actually gotten a whole let's look at texas texas is a is a is a, uh, a state that has a lot of evangelicals but it also has a lot of traditional baptists and methodists and catholics and so forth they could have been embarrassed into supporting into into coming out into action they, they could i mean there are still some good people out there on the other side that could have been embarrassed into action none of that outreach is done uh there is a crystal ball has been t and I, I I need to bring her on the show. I I have to, I, I, I'm going to contact her. She was on the show a few months ago. I'm going to bring her on again. She is supporting Democrats, uh, a whole lot of Democrats in these Appalachian districts and other places that fit their district. And what we have is a party giving her hell, or the 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 elite in the party giving her hell because she's supporting folks that uh, kind of problematic. I mean. We have a party without a vision. We have a party that simply doesn't know how to win and a party that is scared to fight. And you say, come on, uh, come on back in. Journalist, I forgot what your name was. Uh, Walker Bragg. Walker, yeah. Um, yeah, Yeah. no, I think, I think you're right. They, they haven't really developed the progressive bench. They don't really have much of a vision. I've been trying to get a hold of anyone from the DNC to talk to me today. Uh, nobody really seems to want to do that. Um, and, and, and Tom Perez released a statement saying, you know, this is personal, the fight isn't over, but he really didn't say anything. He said a lot without saying anything. A lot of words and nothing. And, and that's and what... Then of course, Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, and then of course you have the partisan hack uh, or, or partisans in the media, the punditry and, and journalists. I mean, you had Joy Reid say, this is great, this is great. Um, Bollert said, this allows us to center the narrative on, on DACA. It's great that they allowed uh, that they allowed the Republicans to pass CHIP without, without doing anything on immigration. It's a great move. Ezra Klein, you know, this is how we prevent the system from going into disaster. I mean, th 
these people enable this gutless leadership. Exactly. All they do is toe the line for the party. I um I saw a pundit yesterday. Uh, 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 did you want to get in, John? John? I thought I heard John. Yeah. Come, yeah. Go ahead. Come on in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just yeah I just want to remind people of uh, something that's important. It's called math. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, we simply I, I just cannot repeat this enough. We we simply don't have the votes to do this. And also, I want to respond to something you said about the 2013 Republican shutdown. Mm-hmm. They paid a severe price for that long shutdown that happened. I mean, the, their their numbers went went incredibly low. Mm-hmm. I mean, and they were they were blamed, uh, you know, forever. I mean, if not forever, but for quite a many many months. Mm-hmm. And as and far as the individual, I guess what happened? They won in twenty. Yeah, they won. They won. Right, because Democrats didn't come out to vote because they didn't come out to vote in two thousand and ten and two thousand and fourteen. Yes, they won. And, and, it, and I know what what did the. You can't say they took a hit if they won the next election. I mean, they won it. They swept that. that election. And that, that that is my and that is where I have changed. They, my... I wouldn't know. They didn't swept. They lost two seats in the Senate, and they lost some seats in the House. I mean, you know, the biggest story of the day is in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. where the gerrymandering got struck down. Uh, that's the biggest story of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Democrats are probably going to gain one to five seats. And that's, you know, I mean, this story is, is big, but I mean, you know, everybody who's an activist right now is is overplaying their hands, in mm-hmm. my opinion. And I'm an activist myself. I've, I've been, I've marched many times. I've, you know, Egberto can vouch for oh, me. Oh, John. And let, I just think it's wrong John. to say everybody's a neoliberal because right. they think that this is actually going to hurt progressives. John, that, I, I mean, you don't you and have, I have to vote. John, you and I have a legitimate dis- disagreement, but by no means should anybody, and, and that's a good thing about progressives, we can have disagreements, stay cordial with each other, and remain friends. That's what we're all about. The disagreement that I have is when you say math, John, why do I disagree with that? Because the Republicans have been so successful with the math that they didn't have. And what I'm saying is we as Democrats or those that are Democrats, well, actually, I'm on I'm on my own network now, so I can say we as Democrats, uh, uh, you know, have to play, learn how to play the cards right. Let me go ahead and get some people off of the um the internet and some of your messages. James Lee says, I am not sure that even the DNC is aligned with congressional leaders at this point. The congressional leaders are the most ineffective of the entire democratic universe. He also says, keep plugging away, Egberto, you are on the right track. Thank you, my brother, uh, with this topic. Um, Rick Rodriguez says, if you are a federal employee living paycheck to paycheck, you wouldn't call it caving. I re- uh, Mr. Rodriguez, I really understand what you're saying. And that is, that is a part that gets to me, and that is a part that allows the Republicans to hold hostages so many times, right? My, I would hope, I would hope that as progressives build, uh, build, they would be ready to have some sort of a contingencies for those people that are living paycheck to paycheck, some sort of a, uh, you know, like what the unions ha- and, and even unions that we don't stand up for right now. We have a candidate that is running for senator here in town uh, in, in Texas, and somehow he skipped the union convention um, because he's in Washington voting. I am not sure. I'm not going to get too much into that because, I, I, you know, um, it is not right to say it right now. But, you know, we are too timid in just saying we support unions, we support values, we support progressive values. Punto final. That's what we support. Let me, uh, let me see if I have any more here to read real quickly. I don't see any more that I can get to. I'm going to have to find a way to scroll the, the whole thing. But anyhow, uh, you want to add anything to that, uh, Walker? Well, yeah. I mean, it, look, it's, there's always a cost when the government is shut down. There's always a human cost, and that's what makes this so difficult and, and awful. It's yes. a terrible situation to be in. But, you know, the, I'd, I'd like to just get back to this 
statement that was made that you know Democrats don't have the votes unless the Republicans have the supermajority. They have the votes. Right. They 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 should be stopping the Republicans on every piece of legislation they can. They should be using it as leverage to get net neutrality passed through the Senate. They should be using it as leverage to protect immigrants. They should be using it as leverage to do to stop as much of Trump's agenda as they can. Uh, and I don't see that happening. Yeah, I I, I think uh, we. Yes, there's the human. Yeah, I think we have to get I'm to sorry? the point. Yeah, yeah, I think we have to get to the point where and look, I understand John's concern concerns. I share them. But uh after doing the same thing over and over again, uh I just think at some point uh Democrats have to show, you know what? Just like you can get crazy and not I, I when I say crazy, I'm not talking about the nut crazy, but just like you can get crazy in the way you do things. You know what? We are going to do the same. We're going to up up the ante. And then again, the de- the Republicans have an option, right? I think there's some procedure where they can use parliamentary procedures to go ahead and get these votes down to 50 votes. I mean, they'll be scared to do it because if they lose the Senate and the Congress in uh, in 20 uh, what is it? 2018. Uh, 18. Yeah, 2018. And we know that, uh, and they, they'll probably know that they can make a deal with Trump. We don't impeach you if you simply go along with what we want. And they, they, they start a complete progressive agenda. And Trump has no choice but to sign the bills. Why? Because they have him be- between a rock and a hard place. So, I mean, you know, for people who say, well, even if you win the, co- the Senate and the Congress, you're still in trouble because you still have the stopgap measure that is Donald Trump. Well, you know, Donald Trump, just like the Russians can blackmail Donald Trump, so can the people locally blackmail Donald Trump into forcing him into signing laws as well. In fact, don't be surprised if his own party does that. And I'm saying his own party. Trump doesn't have a darn party. Trump is Trump. Trump is just for Trump. Again, more people saying I should run. No, James Thomas, I am just going to talk and not only talk, but get out there and be an activist to get work done. And the same applies to you, uh, Rutler, not going to (laughs) run. Okay, John, um, continue with my friend. Anything to add? Because we're getting close to that hour. You you speaking to me? Uh, Yes, John, John. Yeah, who are you? Okay, you know, when you're in the military, they always tell you, you know, you choose your battles mm-hmm. because you don't want people dying unnecessarily. And so, I mean, I think the same thing applies here. You choose your battles. This is a this is a battle that there was no way of winning. You had I know everybody says you have leverage. How are you going to have leverage to actually get <laughs> things passed with, when no Republicans have the same issues that the, the Democrats have? I mean, it, it's it's I just can't believe that people are saying this. I mean, everybody doesn't you know doesn't like Trump, but we have to be realistic, and we're simply not being realistic about this. Unfortunately, you know, Sam Cedar when he was taking calls when Trump won. You know, was consoling people all night about how bad this is is going to get, and it has gotten bad. And the, the fact is, when you don't have the numbers and you can't convince Republicans to vote for uh, for your side, the only remedy you you put out and you have good messaging, and but the only real remedy is the next election, and that is that's just the fact. Let me ask also, you a question, when, John. When oh, let me stop you. Uh, let me ask you a question because um, I, I, I want to see if you, you at least agree with this. Post or rather pre-shutdown, do you think the Democrats had any messaging at all? And post uh, and, and during the shutdown, do you think the Democrats had any message at all? I think that some of the messaging was okay. I, I think it's bad in general, but I mean if you look at the numbers, you know, before the shutdown, it was 87% – uh, we're in favor of DACA. Mm-hmm. So the issue really isn't you know, whether the public opinion is on their side. Public opinion was on their side. It's, it's the fact that Republicans don't care. This is what I s- stated with in the very beginning. They don't care what public opinion is, and that's why they were down by double digits in the generic ballot before. And yes, and that's gotten bad, and I agree that some of the messaging is bad. But I mean, also one of the things about about the leadership, these legislatures, 
they they vote their own they have that their own votes i mean right. you know leadership can tell them whatever they want but in the end they have to vote you know what with what they feel you know is going to help help themselves john i got and another so, call in i know, want to get to I mean, I, I, john we we have a, a another call in and i don't want to lose that person uh, so hold hold your horse right for a minute uh 980 you're on uh yeah um I'd, li- I, I'd like to disagree because I'm sorry, but the message, it's not about the, the Democrats have the right messaging, they didn't have the right numbers. It's, a, it's about what's morally correct, and when you stand up for your values, and especially when you can make your opposition bleed over it, every second that Republicans were holding up against DACA, every second that they were being against CHIP, they were losing, they were losing viability in the public's eye. What is your name, sir? Guess what? People, uh, it's Pranav, Egberto. Oh, Pranav, how you doing? Hey, man. No, it's, it, they were losing viability every single second. They were infighting. Look, you know what it is? There's, there's a lot of moderates out there that are socially progressive that might have voted Republican, that have voted Republican because <laughs> business owners and all that. Guess what? They've gotten their tax cut. Right. Now, everything Republicans are doing is embarrassing either at an international level or at a domestic level. It's hurting businesses. Just in the city of Houston, we have over 200,000 dreamers. This is, I hate making this argument, but now imagine if 200,000 people suddenly can no longer work, no longer support their families, no longer are paying taxes. That's bad for the city of Houston. Now you take that up to 800,000 around the country, that's terrible for our country. Excellent. We already have very slow growth, and you're just hurting it even more. And you're make you're make you're you're going out of your way to make sure America is no longer the world's moral leader. Trump has already done more than enough to damage the what the vision of American values is around the world. We need Great. and the thank Democrats you, Pranav. I only have a minute, and I need to. The line the thank you very much, Pranav. Stay on. I have one more caller. Three one four. Come on in. Uh, you got about thirty seconds. Well, I I sort of disagree. I supported and voted for Donald Trump. I like the policy. Mm-hmm. Look, if an immigrant is, is here illegally, they have to go. I mean, it's simple as that. What are we going to do? This is supposed to be a land of laws, and it should start someplace. And, you know, I'm an African-American, and I get ridiculed and cursed at and so on and so on. So I'm happy of, of his policies. I really am. Okay, but let the, me just tell I'm you. Sorry my, I couldn't get in earlier, but I was busy. No problem at all, my friend. Let me tell you something. You you won't get ridiculed or embarrassed here, but I you will get some truth here, and that is, uh, and and I'm going to say this, and, and then I'm going to have to close the show down. I'm not going to get a chance to give everybody a, a chance to go ahead and give a closing statement like I usually do. But here's the deal. Um, just like the settlers found a way to come into this, I said this on a previous show, and I hope that you'd listen to one of the cuts that I did when a white supremacist called into the show last week. But just like uh, the, the fact of the matter is this. Uh, the pilgrims and settlers came here, and they took dominion over the land, and uh, they found a way to come in and stay. I have no seconds. problem, absolutely no problems with anybody who is able to uh, defeat our entry methodologies or entry modal and get in. If you get in, you stay. I, I have no problem trying to enforce our borders, but if you get in, you stay. This country was started on a sin, and it's a sin that the only uh, the only recompense for that sin is for those who get over here to be able to stay, in my humble opinion. Folks, thank you so kindly for being a part of this seconds. show. Uh, it, it's no show without you, and I have one request, and that is all of you, please make sure to share these shows. It is very important because a lot of what you're going to hear here, you won't hear on MSNBC or all the other stations because we are going to cover real issues. We are going to continue to cover them, and we are going to bring you progressive candidates day in and day out whenever we can. So please remember, again, share these videos. Go ahead and like the page Politics Done Right uh, with Egberto Willis on Facebook. Please like that page. And please go ahead and follow the Twitter handle Egberto Willis, E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, because there are times if we have things we want to just blast out to you to go ahead and make a difference in this society, we are going to need to have your contact. We don't blast you, but go ahead again. And if you're on our website, EgbertoWillis.com, please go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and subscribe to our blog.
Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four.